after the wild, carefree, and creative days of the 20s, the 30s were a time of struggle, internationally and at home. World politics were setting the stage for World War II, as the Nazi party led in the elections and Hitler was appointed Fuhrer. In America, the Great Depression and FDR dominated this decade. In 1938, Grafton suffered a torrential hurricane which gutted roads and washed the old post office and the old fire station off their foundations. The flooding took out 11 town bridges, including many covered bridges that sadly could never be replaced. There was no way in or out of town afterwards for days, but a few brave folks crossed the Saxton's, Saxton's River in baskets suspended by a cable wire. In 1938, the Women's Club incorporated, and the first life member was Miss Susan Daniels, who paid $5. Miss Lucy Daniels was also voted a lifetime member. Early activities of our WCC included an annual garden party, an antique fair, and other fundraisers to help with such village improvements as piano tunings in the town hall. Ultimately, the club came to view our mission as helping Grafton's high school graduates with scholarship funds for their college education, the same mission that we have today. In the 1930s, new designs, much like some of the new music, was actually created to lift moods with a pervasive lightness in the airy and dramatic gowns cut on the bias. And we now see Lisa and Annie wearing lovely long velvet gowns. Lisa is wearing her own plum gown with a fur wrap and a delightful headpiece. Annie is wearing a wine gown of Devore velvet in a polka dot pattern and she's carrying a tapestry handbag. Her hat is from the collection of Marlene Whitaker. Samantha is next, and she's going to dazzle us in an unusual chartreuse beaded evening gown with a matching over jacket. This is a transition piece, actually, between the beaded flapper styles of the 20s and the more elongated feminine profile of the 1930s. The big fashion news story, really, of the 20s and 30s was that the restrictive boned corsets, cinchers, and other undergarments were no longer being worn. As women became more active and fashionable, or mobile, rather, the fashionable women were now wearing the newly invented brassiere and tap pants. <laughs> and we're watching Elise modeling a fine pink silk kimono which Bruce Jackson's father bought in 1938 for his mother. Underneath it, she's wearing a pink bra top and tap pants that Barbara Williams' mother made for her own 1930s bridal trousseau. Next, we're going to meet Jennifer and Valerie and they are wearing different versions of a beautiful, popular, sheer floral style of a chiffon gown. These types of gowns are always cut on the bias, using lots of fabric, very feminine, very flattering. They're wearing wide-brimmed hats. The hat that Jennifer's wearing is the hat that my mother, Florence Carpin, wore on her honeymoon. <laughs> You'll notice that that cloche hat from the 20s has been completely replaced by this time. And Valerie is wearing a nice straw hat with a flower and a blue chiffon dress. Thank you, Valerie. And now Lori is here, and she's showing us a red and white gown from her own collection that has a front metal zipper. Although the zipper was invented in 1913, it wasn't used widely <laughs> until the 1930s. And then it was implemented because it actually cost less than buttons. In the US, expense dictated how clothes were made. Styles did change, but we have to remember that people were very thrifty. And they kept their clothes for years. They would remake or rework something rather than running out and replacing it, as we do today. As the 30s drew to a close, day wear remained feminine and girly, and hemlines were starting to rise up the leg once again. 
We have three lovely models now to show you. First Laura, then Annie, then Mary. And they are all showing us day dresses from the late 1930s, practical and fancy, that typify the end of that decade. Laura is wearing a white day dress with red buttons and a red hat. Annie in a brown balloon printed dress. And Mary wears a very sweet and fancy peekaboo black lace dress. Our gentleman for this model is Peter, and he is very suave in his double-breasted jacket, wide cuff trousers. <laughs> oh, I think he's armed and dangerous. <laughs> There's a gangster in the house. <laughs> Thank you very much to all of our 1930s models. <laughs> Thank you.